Now I want to talk about approximate inference by means of sampling. What do I mean by that? Say we want to deal with a joint probability distribution. Say the distribution of heads and tails over these two coins. We can build a table and then start counting by sampling. Here we have our first sample. We flipped the coins, and the one cent piece came up heads, and the five cent piece came up tails. So we would mark down one count. Then we toss them again. This time the five cents is heads, and the one cent is tails. So we put down a count there. Then we'd repeat that process. and keep repeating it until we got enough counts that we could estimate the joint probability distribution by looking at the counts. Now, if we do a small number of samples, the counts might not be very accurate. There may be some random variation that causes them not to co converge to the true values. But as we add more counts, the counts, as we add more samples, the counts we get will come closer to the true distribution. Thus, Sampling has an advantage over inference in that we know a procedure for coming up with at least an approximate uh, value for the joint probability distribution, as opposed to exact inference where the computation may be very complex. There's another advantage to sampling, which is if we don't know what the conditional probability tables are, as we did in our other models, if we don't know these numeric values, but we can simulate the process, we can still proceed with sampling, whereas we couldn't with exact inference. Here's a new network that we'll use to investigate how sampling can be used to do inference. In this network, we have four variables. They're all Boolean. Cloudy tells us if it's cloudy or not outside, and that can have an effect on whether the sprinklers are turned on and whether it's raining. And those two variables, in turn, have an effect on whether the grass gets wet. Now, to do inference over this network using sampling, we start off with a variable where all the parents are defined. In this case, there's only one such variable, cloudy. And its conditional probability table tells us that the probability is 50% for cloudy and 50% for not cloudy. And so we sample from that. We generate a random number, and let's say it comes up with positive for cloudy. Now that variable is defined. We can choose another variable. In this case, let's choose sprinkler. And we look at the rows in the table for which cloudy, the parent, is positive. And we see we should sample with probability 10% uh, a positive S and 90% a negative S. And so let's say we do that sampling with a random number generator, and it comes up negative for a sprinkler. Now let's jump over here, look at the rain variable. Again, the parent, cloudy, is positive. So we're looking at uh, this part of the table. We get a 0.8 probability for rain being positive and a 0.2 probability for rain being negative. Let's say we sample that randomly, and it comes up rain is positive. And now we're ready to sample the final variable. And what I want you to do is tell me which of the rows of this table should we be considering and tell me what's more likely. Is it more likely that we have a positive W or a negative W? The answer to the question is that we look at the parents. We find that the sprinkler variable is negative, so we're looking at this part of the table. And the rain variable is positive, so we're looking at this part. So it would be these two rows that we would consider. And thus we'd find there's a 0.9 probability for W, the grass being wet, and only 0.1 for it being negative. So the positive is more likely. And once we've done that, then we generated a complete sample. And we can write down the sample here, 
we had plus C minus S plus R. And assuming uh, we got a probability of uh, 0.9 came out in favor of the plus W, that would be the end of the sample. Then we could throw all this information out and start over again by having another 50-50 choice for Cloudy and then working our way through the network. Now the probability of sampling a particular variable using a plus W or a minus W depends on the values of the parents. But those are chosen according to the conditional probability tables. So in the limit, the count of each sampled variable will approach the true probability. That is, with an infinite number of samples, this procedure computes the true joint probability distribution. We say that the sampling method is consistent. We can use this kind of sampling to compute the complete joint probability distribution, or we can use it to compute a value for an individual variable. But what if we wanted to compute a conditional probability? Say we wanted to compute the probability of wet grass given that it's not cloudy. To do that, the sample that we generated here wouldn't be helpful at all because it has to do with uh, being cloudy, not with being not cloudy. So we would cross this sample off the list. We would say that we reject the sample, and this technique is called rejection sampling. So we go through ignoring any samples that don't match the conditional probabilities that we're interested in, and keeping samples that do, say the sample minus C plus S plus R minus W. We would just continue going through, generating samples, crossing off the ones that don't match, keeping the ones that do. And this procedure would also be consistent. And we call this procedure rejection sampling. 